morning everybody and welcome back to my channel if you're new it's Joni Young and I'm going to show you guys step by step how to paint this sweet little robin so I've painted it once already and I'm going to show you how to paint it on this six by six inch uh, acrylic paper and you can paint this on canvas as well in fact I'm using a canvas paper here so it's very very similar the technique brush strokes everything will be the same you can also paint it on a larger canvas I've got it taped down here and I'm going to be going over some of the brushes I'm using today, including a beauty blender. So I just discovered an amazing hack for using a beauty blender and creating that uh, bokeh or bokeh background effect. You guys are going to love this. I've also got a number four mini flat brush and a micro mini liner brush. You can use anything larger or smaller than these brushes I've got here. And you can also use a little round brush. Um, I've got neon purple violet, light blue violet, titanium white, black, neon yellow warm, and neon orange. So let's begin. I'm going to start by taking my beauty blender and I'm not going to get it wet first. To load the sponge, I'm just going to tap gently on the bottom. It's the only place I want to be using this beauty blender for this technique. So just a little goes a really long way. In fact, I didn't even need as much as what I put on there. Um, so you're just going to take it and twist around in a circle counterclockwise and clockwise and layer over. So this gives you that blurry uh, background. Then I want to take a little bit of white and see if I can make some softer tones and what that would look like layered over. And it ended up looking really pretty like a blurry blue sky with soft clouds. So not only is this really effective for a technique of creating a blurry background, it's really fun and satisfying to use. Now I've done this background uh, many times using a paintbrush and you can achieve it using a paintbrush. It's a little bit more time consuming and uh, less fun. I feel like it's a little bit more work. So I am recommending trying this out and you can get a bag of uh, those beauty blenders just at your local dollar store they're very inexpensive so now right away without drying it off you can paint this uh, branch dry on a dry canvas or uh, painting or you can paint it wet on wet so here i'm just adding it wet on wet black first with my number four uh, flat brush and i'm going to pull diagonally starting from the bottom right corner and then I'm going to create a few little bumps that come out, little notches here for where they might have some new growth for some little twigs and leaves. And I'm just going to take more black, making it more shadowed and darker on the bottom of the twig or branch. Now on the top, I'm going to use more white and add more highlights. I'm going to tap and turn my brush in different directions each time I tap using the corner and the full length of the brush to create just a... Uh, textured rough bark um, effect on this. This is what's going to make it look really 3D and really stand out. Now to make brown I'm just going to take my neon orange with black and a little bit of white and I'll start tapping in a little bit of that sometimes adding more orange or more white so I get lighter and darker shades of it. Now you can also do this by um, mixing the purple violet with a little bit of orange as well and that will give you a really nice color and I'm going to add a few other colors here but I'm going to just show you how you can build this up so no water on your brush at all just paint light little taps and just by doing this it looks like it's 3d like part of the bark is kind of popping out and starting to fall off and peel away from from the branch it's a really really easy and effective way to create a, a 3d uh, effect on your branches so I'll continue here just adding a little bit and then we'll start working on the bird Now I'm going to get a little bit of black and white together. It can mix in with a little bit of that orange as well. And I'm going to start the basic outline of our little bird here. So it's going to be like a slanted oval shape here, um, uh, more dramatic and exaggerated down on the right side. 
And so yeah, it just looks like a little oval here to start and then we'll have uh, the tail feathers that are gonna be a little bit darker and the wing on this side. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that neon orange with my black and start coming in and creating um, darker shapes within these feathers. And then I'm gonna just come right around the bottom left side and around the left side for the wing on that side. Now we're gonna just kind of hide that a little bit with some more feathers, but we need that to begin for our first stages of this bird. And I'm just gonna start pulling and flicking gently to create a little bit of a feathered look on the back of our little Robin's head. And just by using this brush, because the bristles, when your bristles start to separate a little bit in your brushes, that's a great time to uh, create feathers and fur or hair. So in this case, it's working to our benefit to add these little feathers. And I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of black and add the beak on a, on a slant, a little diagonal there. And then we're gonna have shadow of feathers around the eye and then a nice round little eye here using just the corner of my flat brush you can use a the round or a round brush or a liner brush and then we've got one leg right here and it's on a slant so I'm just gonna add about an inch in length of the leg and then a little uh, claw little claws that wrap around the branch and I'm still just using my little flat brush and then I'm just gonna tap in for some highlights and texture on those claws with a little bit of white I'll do the same on the beak I'll add a little line there that gradually kind of turns gray as it blends in with that black just for the beak area there and then with the corner of my brush a little bit more white and we'll add a little dab of white inside the eye and outline it and eventually we'll come in with the yellow and the white to outline that eye but this is a, a good start for the beginning stages okay with a clean brush I'm now going to take my neon yellow warm a little bit of white a little bit of water on my brush and just start gently building up the layers and the colors of the feathers and now into my orange a little bit of yellow and white and you can use more or less of these colors and of course you can use any orange or yellow it doesn't have to be um, neon like I'm using here these are just what I love to paint with and I'll leave a link below for these if you guys are interested they're uh, Holbein luminous neon heavy bodied paints so I'm going to alternate and keep adding the color here and I think it looks looks really really pretty over the light blue violet. Uh, that's why I chose the light blue violet because it looks really beautiful and complementary with uh, both this yellow and orange. So I want to concentrate on the colors being just above the beak, below and partially down. Uh, the chest and the belly and then the rest of course will be shades of white so it's not going to just be straight white it's going to be tinted slightly with uh, gray blue and a little bit of the yellow and with the yellow over top of the blue it might take on a little bit of a green tinge but when you're painting um, things that look like they're white when you really take a close close look at them there are different shades of white going on um, so it's really important to look closely at what you're painting and you'll discover other colors in there and when you do and you incorporate them into your painting that's what's going to make your painting uh, go to the next level and look uh, a lot more lifelike it will add that life to it and it'll just look more appealing and realistic so what I like to do is play up on my colors and that being said I'm using the neon violet here to do that I just think it would it's beautiful to add this instead of just black for the darker shadows of the feathers around uh, this little robin's eye and I'm also going to go over the darkest parts of the tail feathers and the wing and also the beak it's a beautiful rich color 
and I love to play up on color in my paintings. Um, and I like to add a lot of highlights and shadows, midtones, all of that together uh, makes for a really pretty painting. And it's fun to paint like this too. I think that the more colors you can incorporate in your paintings, um, the more appealing they are to look at. Um, so I'm just going to keep coming around here, adding a little bit of black and white. I want to bring this wing out and the shadow feathers a little bit more. And just by holding my brush on a slant like this and using the end of it, I could create these thin, thin lines easily without having to switch over to a liner brush. So this is an effective brush to use for almost the entire painting. So I'm just using my liner brush here and there. Um, but but really, this painting can be done with the three tools I'm using today. So the little flat brush, liner brush, and the beauty blender. So I'm picking up white now, and I'm going to start layering over and building up these feathers uh, one layer at a time. And using my brush uh, on, the, on the end of it, using just the end, and then I alternate here and there using the full width. So it's a nice idea to uh, just pull and flick gently when you want to have those softer looking feathers. And I'm going to have, be having an upcoming video where I show you guys how you can make your acrylics act like oils and look like oils. So you'll have this airbrush effect by just using, learning to use a fine mister uh, spray bottle, just a little bit of water. So when you're painting wet on wet, you get a beautiful oil painted look to your acrylics. So if you like the vividness of acrylics, but you like the way oil paint looks, you can have the best of both worlds. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that upcoming video. So I'm just adding more saturation here and building up that beautiful, happy yellow. That's the neon yellow warm. And it really is like liquid gold. It's just beautiful. I added a little bit of black here on the side and I just, it was a little bit too thick. So I just wiped some of that off. And now I'm gonna come in and add more layers of feathers so I'm just going to keep building this up you could leave it like this at, you know you don't have to have as many layers or as much color as, as I am but I think just by watching how I use my brush how I take the time to build these layers up and all these little details where I'm adding my highlights where I'm adding a little bit more of the orange all of that will really help you guys uh, learn how you can just tweak and change something a little bit and it, it will make a big impact. So I love color and especially on birds. I love birds. So any whenever I see a bird that has a lot of color on it, I get really excited. And we've got, uh, though this is a robin, um, this was inspired by the bright, bright yellow little birds that we've got flying around here. Um, on Vancouver Island. I don't know what they're called, but um, they're really, really pretty. They look really tropical. And um, we also have a lot of robins. So um, every robin's a little bit different. Sometimes they have a little bit more uh, color to them. And here I just really wanted to play up on the color, um, doing what I love to do. You guys know that I love color. Um, I'm just adding another layer in here and you can see it's tinted a little bit. I've got it in the yellow white and just a little bit of the black or the gray in there so this is really important to um, develop those uh, shadow layers in your uh, feathers and the furry bits there because when you have shadows then you have highlights and then each one of those play upon one another making a 3d image so that it doesn't look flat right you can't add uh, highlight onto a highlight and expect that to show up they go together so you, you can't have one without the other um, if you're working on a really dark background then you've already got the dark base there and you could just keep coming in with um, lighter tones so you could paint this on a darker background and, and then you would use less black and you could just concentrate on adding your feathers with your lighter colors and if you guys are interested in learning um, more about that and want to understand what I'm talking about, I've got an owl, how to paint an owl, a few tutorials actually. I've got, I love owls, they're one of my favorite birds, so I've got a few tutorials. 
I'll leave a link below this video or at the very end where I show you step by step thoroughly how to paint an owl on a black canvas. So it's really dramatic and uh, it's quite fun to paint and you're going to learn a lot about painting feathers and different techniques uh, because I've, I'm a self-taught artist of over 25 plus years. I never went to school, I never watched anybody paint. I learned to paint um, developing my own skills. Well, I shouldn't say I didn't watch any Ben paint. I watched Bob Ross when I was a little girl, um, though he was painting in oils. I still learned um, the basics of painting trees and some waterfalls. So here I'm just playing up. All I'm doing is, is intensifying my shadows, my highlights, and adding more color. So a little bit more of that. Uh, beautiful neon purple violet. I think it looks quite nice with um, a little bit of blue as well. And I'm just going to take a bit of that blue or light purple violet uh, and a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and I'm going to start my little flowers here. So these are just, I'm just making these up. I'm kind of taking three different flowers that I love and making up my own. <laughs> um, so violets or the like the little uh, violas and um, yeah and violets and uh, also cherry blossoms. So viola violas are if you're if you're unfamiliar with them they're like mini pansies and they're really really pretty and most of the time they're this deep violet color almost like a whiny purple so what I can do is use this full on this purple violet uh, but I can also uh, warm it up a little bit even more by adding some of that neon orange or the neon yellow so I'm gonna paint uh, four to five petals in like teardrop shapes the bottom petal is going to be wider and more exaggerated and then I'm going to come around and outline them making the white part um, on the very top uh, thicker than the sides of the petals. I'll then tap the very center of the flowers with some neon yellow that you'll see in just a minute. I've got another neon yellow and it's a cool yellow so it's coming up right about now and I'll be adding a little dab of this right in the very center um, of the bottom petal of the flower. So when you look at pansies or violas, they have this bright yellow, especially these um, wine or deep violet cover colored ones. And this is where I'm gonna be using my little uh, mini liner brush here. I'm just gonna do a few little lines and then take more white and build up my highlights a little bit more in pattern on these petals. Um, what you wanna do is concentrate on keeping the inside of the petals really dark and the outside of the petals really light. Now, of course, you can, you can paint any flowers that you want and I've got quite a few tutorials on how to paint cherry blossoms, roses, I've got some brand new ones on roses, um, beginner friendly, easy, easy, basic roses. That you guys will be so surprised uh, to see how easy they are to paint and I've also got lots of daisies um, uh, foxgloves I was forgetting what they were called um, and lupin so have a look through my uh, playlist and my videos if you want more ideas and easy uh, tips for painting flowers so I'm just gonna come in and with my little filbert brush here and just pull gently and flick to create those little veins that you get, those little lines and veins you get within the petals, especially with a pansy or those little violas. So just adding a little bit more highlights here, some lines. I think you guys get the idea. <laughs> and then once I finish um, getting the nice bright white on here, I'm gonna be making some little leaves, very simple. Um, super super easy now this whole painting um, is very beginner friendly so no matter what if you're just starting out painting you can paint along with me to this just follow step by step and if you have any questions uh, just leave them in the comment section below this video and you can also join our Facebook group too where you can share your versions from my YouTube tutorials and it's very positive um, supportive community we have over there it's free to join so I'm just going to um, take my little liner brush here and add a little bit more depth 
and thickness make it a little bit wider here on the beak. And you also saw that I, like I mentioned earlier, I was going to outline the little bird's eyeball uh, with the light yellow and white. So I did that and now it stands out a lot more. I'm also going to add a little bit of a highlight on the top of the beak, making it look like it's shiny and the light's hitting it. So it just makes it look uh, shiny and smooth and kind of reflective. Taking a little bit of black now and adding the darkest, going over the darkest areas of the bird and the petals. So I'm going to take a little bit of black with my neon violet here and add a few little lines within each petal. I don't want to cover up or hide any of the light purple violet uh, that I added earlier. I just want to intensify some darker areas here and play up on those veins and shadows and lines on each petal. And right after I do this, I'm going to create instant simple little leaves by taking my little uh, flat brush here, yellow and black. So yellow and black make a wonderful shade of green depending on which shade of yellow you're using you'll get either a cooler green or a warmer green so I'm using a cool yellow here so my green will be a little bit more um, on like the emerald side so like an emerald green right is a cooler green um, anyways I'm gonna add a little bit of white to um, make a softer shade here and there and add a little dab so just a push pull and let off and twist your brush and you'll get a, a different shape or different variation of type of leaf but it's really fail proof you guys can all do this and you're gonna love this technique now if you don't have a little flat brush like this you can also paint um, this with a filbert brush so don't worry if you don't have these brushes if you're not sure about the colors don't hesitate to leave a comment or a question below the video. Also look in the description box below this video for a full list of the colors and brushes, links. Um, there's lots of info below all of my videos. So make sure you check that out and you won't miss out on um, the colors I'm using and suggestions, links to other tutorials that you might like and groups that you can join. So I'm just going to add the finishing touches um, on the petals here. I'm going in and then out with them, as you can see. Make it look like the petals are um, layered and in front of one another. So just by pushing and pulling in and then letting out, you can create that. And it also gives it more of that pansy petal um, shape to them. So I gently peeled off the tape and now I'm left with this light a thin white frame I think looks really pretty and don't forget you can paint this on canvas I'm using canvas paper and it's no different you're gonna follow this um, instructional video the same way thank you so much for watching everybody this was really fun to paint and I'm looking forward to seeing yours please subscribe to my channel for more and I'll see you all soon in my next video bye